the year 2000, when I was about 28, I had a big motorbike crash. Stayed in hospital for a month, realized that one day to the next, everything could be over, so might as well live today as if it was the last day and do everything you wanted to do now before it was too late. And in 2005, bought my first boat in the Caribbean. Following your passion, not worrying too much about a future, just living each day and saying, I like kiteboarding, I like sailing, and all things, things that go together really, really well. The captain Richard Scott, um, he's the man of the boat. Living the dream, and he just lives whatever he wants, where is ocean. Sometimes he spend one month in the South Caribbean, then goes to the North Caribbean and just have been explored the whole Caribbean. He knows pretty much every place, which is good for kiteboarding. Secret spots, beautiful landscapes, crystal water. It's really cool to be here with him again. It's always nice to hear his stories because, you know, once you live in the sailboat, you have so many things going on that you always have story to tell. I saw the crash, I was like, fuck, that was insane. Who is this crazy guy, you know? I tried to keep it a secret for a while. And then I went to the trip with Richard and Someone told me he was the guy from the crash. I was like, no way, man. <laughs> and we'd seen a guy practicing static line flying. We thought we'd give it a shot, but instead of using the line tied to the, the a rock, we put it to the top of the mast, thinking it would obviously pull us up a little bit more. Um, and it did. It worked quite well. Someone on the boat yelled, loop it. So well, that's a good idea. Maybe that'll get me a bit more height. So put in a, put in a loop and didn't realize how high I'd got. I thought I was only maybe five, 10 meters off the ground, and actually it was already 20 meters high. That's when I put in a second kite loop, trying to get a little bit higher, not realizing that I was already at the top of the mast. That put too much strain on the line tying me to the mast, and there was a knot that, that broke. And so, all of a sudden, no tension in the lines. The kite was probably below me, or at the same height, and there was no way of steering it back up to 12, and landed flat on my side, and that was the last thing I remember. And I woke up in the dinghy about five minutes later, being rushed to the shore, not being able to breathe. But uh, yeah, everything ended okay, just a bit of internal bleeding. Um, stayed in hospital for a few days in Martinique, you know, and uh, out of action for about a month. But uh, no, no permanent damage, I don't think. Won't be doing it again in a hurry. <laughs> all over his body. He doesn't have a piece of his back. He's like, oh, fucked up somehow. But he's still there kiting. He has a really good kite level. So I think there was around two to three days staying at Las Terrenas. The wind wasn't so strong there, we knew about it, but the place was unbelievably beautiful. It's where we were foiling and I wing foiled a few times. And then after uh, those few days at Las Terrenas, we decided to uh, take the boat and get started on our boat expedition. <laughs> We start sailing west. We have been sailing through, through the day, through the night, spending 10 hours crossing the ocean. And then after that expedition, we arrived in Cabarete. We met with Tom Kour, Paula, and Valentin. We had an amazing session in La Boca, which is one of the best spots for freestyle uh, in the world, I would say. And it's really nice always to catch up. And then at sunset, we had an amazing um, session. 
Paula came out to Bozu Beach and we went wing foiling um, during this really beautiful sunset and it stayed windy till like, like in seven o'clock at night. So that was really awesome. So the following morning, uh, we decided to keep heading west down the coast, set sail, and it was also cranking wind. It was probably like 25 knots at the time. So I decided to pull out the wing and I was kind of just following the sailboat, which was a really uh, amazing experience. And then uh, Machu and uh, Reno also jumped on the wing after me. It was really cool to watch them. They were killing it. They were doing super good. It was just an hour or two until we arrived at our next destination, which is called uh, Cayo Arena. It's this beautiful blue island in like the middle of nowhere. And when we got there, it was Sunday, in the end of the day, and it looked like a football stadium with so many people. And we almost got like a bit disappointed when we got there, but we pumped our kite, we went in and we just started jumping over people, over the boats. and. Everybody was fully drunk, screaming when we were jumping over there, and it was really fun. The best experience for me was when we woke up and there was no one in the middle of nowhere with really blue water. Another day in paradise. And yeah, it just looks so beautiful. We had a cool, mellow cruising session in the morning. The next destination, we were heading for these this island chain called the um, Siete Hermanos, um, which means the seven brothers. And it was very surprising, actually. We found this place and it was very windy. It didn't look as good as it was actually. When I got into the water, when I put my kite and I felt like the 27 knots or so that we had, it was so much fun. Uh, we're gonna spend some more days here where we are right now in Siete Hermanos. It's really, really, really calm today here this morning. It's really hard to believe it's gonna be 30 knots today again. I really wish. If you follow the winds, they are taking us west. Um, so that's towards Panama, and then you've got the Pacific. So I think the, the next chapter is the Pacific. I mean, if you get stuck in the Caribbean for 10 years, how long can you get stuck in the, in the Pacific? You know, you go on for until retirement, I think, until I can't hold a rope anymore.